Uh, I'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Oh, sure. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. I'll post a nay. This is 4 0. Uh, opportunities for members of the public to address the board. Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, any issues with the minutes or uh, anything else you guys had questions on? If not, I'll call for a motion to approve the consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda. A second. Seconded. And for discussion, public comment. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Consent agenda passes 4 0. Correspondence since last meeting. Um, I saw there was something here. Uh, it looks like we got a $1,500 um, award from some of <laughs> foundation. Um, <laughs> to help with the uh, pump trap, Kelly pump trap. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yes, great, good job, guys. Thank you. Thanks. And that's all I had. Unless there was any other that came in that you want to discuss. No. Nothing. Okay. Uh, that moves on to item six, which is the safety meeting. James. Well, there were no employee accidents or liability incidents. Uh, no new business. No old business. Play downs are good shape. Um, and I mean, as far as safety goes, we had the trees trimmed around the horseshoe pits, and I think just in time with the wind and storm that we had recently. But I'm going to take this for two days, and, and uh, we got all the dead wood from the mat, removed uh, four uh, dead dying trees, all the all off. GBC, C, so we're here to do the groundwork and fed the chipper, make everything up, and we're going to have about two days. Great. Perfect. If you want to roll into the manager report, if there's anything here, if we have. Oh, uh, that's what I like. Um, get the lights around the park, which is yeah, looks super good. The lights around the park. We have a lot of positive comments. Uh, so those lights, um, LED, uh, bulb every 12 inches. We were able to put it up, which is four four strands, um, 220 foot approximate length. Perfect color too. Quarter the quarter of the way around. Okay. So. We actually uh, ordered some timers for them, oh. so we'll put them on a timer. <clears throat> They're on 24-7 currently. We just you know, plugged in and we get them on. So. Cool. What are you going to do in front of the hall, too? Um, probably not this year. Okay. They're $1,400 worth of lights, so maybe next year. Yeah. But the difference is, I mean, I don't know if we want to do the hall or not. We, um, well, we do the hall and the park initially for Christmas, and then the comments were, you know, leave the lights up. But we... Only leave them up around the park. We take them mm. out around the hall. So okay. I don't know if we want to have lights around the hall year round as well. We should ask for reimbursement on the lighting on the lighting district. Lights park up pretty well. They would pay for the lights. That'd be yeah. yeah. We should submit for you know submit for reimbursement to the lighting district. They can. Yeah. Okay. That's I would. It's for. Yeah, and labor. Mm -hmm. um, and see if they want to get lights for the. I mean, we can do the hall too at that rate. You know, if they're going to pay for it. Yeah. Inquire. That's it. There's a few other topics that are covered later in the, on the agenda. Okay. Um, well, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's back up. Okay. okay. I, um, I, well, yeah, it's not on there. I, um, I had occasion to talk to Doug Benton. Oh. I asked him, basically asked him for $400,000. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he took it well. <laughs> I called him and I asked him. I left a message initially if he was still interested in doing something for his father. He was out of out of the state anyway. He was out of town. Uh, he called me yesterday when he got back and we had a little discussion. He said that he did want to. You know, he mentioned the ball field. I told him that we had um, another suggestion, and I kind of wanted to sit down and meet with him. It was a little weird, you know, talking to him on the phone. But um, ultimately, I told him a little bit of the history of the the building and we applied for a grant and this and that and we just thought that if you know he was willing to purchase the building donate it um call it the carlos fenton community center he thought it was a good idea he was open to the idea he said that he would consider it and get back to us and then today i had uh occasion to meet with renee and i don't know her name but she's the chief administrator for the tribe and i related the same story with the <clears throat> with the building and the idea that they were one time interested in the property at the top of the hill and she asked me to put it all in writing. I actually showed her a letter that we had um, we had written uh, as part of the proposal back in 2017 to the county to give them that land along with that that piece of property that was part of a property exchange with the tribe 
and she was interested in that. And she says, you know, send me that, write it up, and she'll take it to the elders and, and see. So that was good too. So both of those things occurred uh, in the last couple of days in relation to the to the <coughs> Terry's Wilson building. Yeah. That's good. Great. Mm -hmm. That's it. Any highlights from maintenance or office and <coughs> finance reports? Um, did we skip over the nope. letter that Kelly needs for uh, thoughts on the general manager? I wrote that in the um, in my GM report, but it's it's actually coming up as okay. part of the amphitheater. Okay. okay. Uh, so there'll be an action item there. Okay. I didn't like you to update on your trip. No, it was amazing. It was amazing. Did you guys learn a lot? Yeah, there, was, there were some good tips for sure. There were a lot of um, class opportunities. The um, advanced classes, there were two choices for each class offered. So we actually have access to all the information um, online for a month. So any classes that we missed or any other pressure that we want to go over, we can print out materials or download some things. And, okay. Yeah, pretty cool. Good. Thank you for letting us go. Yeah, that's no, good. Yeah. What you guys with the knowledge? Mm -hmm. Perfect. I went to a class um, that was led by the designer or something of Streamline, which is the website mm -hmm. we use. Mm -hmm. and afterwards, I went up and talked to him, and we actually talked to Streamline quite a bit, and um, it was very helpful. And okay. he had a lot of information to work in complete compliance. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. That's what we want. Great. Great. Okay. Uh, any other comments, questions from the board on finance, uh, office events, maintenance, manager report, or from the public? Okay, moving on to item eight, discussion action items. Uh, item 8.1, which is the resolution for the amphitheater. Um, David, I'm sorry, can we back up just, I don't know what it would be under, but since I see here that you have um, those guys set up and I was not sure what that recent event was, but there was somebody camping in the park overnight in an RV. What was that for? They run slab. Yeah. That was the. What was that? That was the rem, the remnants of. I want to say it was either one of Dave's uh, uh, flea market that we had a two day long, um, you know, craft flea market event. <coughs> what I think it was, or it may have been the. Um, I'm blanking out here. There was a group. Came. What was the group that came with the? I want to say it wasn't Watch. It was a county group, a service group came, um, offered a bunch of different booths. Um, I'm sorry, I can't even remember what weekend it was, but yeah, it was just I, something I thought, oh, is that something It was. Happens? It was people yeah. related to an event that was here earlier in the day, and I think they just stayed over, yeah. is what happened. Yeah, yeah. just uh, hadn't seen that before, and then having seen a couple of guys the last couple of weeks camping uh, yeah. in different places downtown. Just wondering. Right, that was not related, but yeah. there are a few homeless people mm -hmm. who are yeah, there's 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 to move into the area. Yeah. He's camped on the museum steps a couple of times and we've had this. Yeah. Shoe them out. It's hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shoe them too is the problem, but don't want them hanging around town. Thanks, James. You're welcome. Yeah. So, the resolution for the amphitheater, um, I, maybe, would you like to explain it? Um, <coughs> sure. Um, um, so the $1,500 that we got was actually from the Department of Health that they are using Sonora Area Foundation to release the funds from. I want to apply directly to Sonora Area Foundation and they require that we have a re uh, resolution which allows me to fundraise and ask for donations. Oh, so this is this resolution for the amphitheaters to go after more funding? Yes, yeah, so I, I'm almost finished with the packet for Sonora Area Foundation. It's, it's pretty extensive. I've got the letter done and most of the backup work done, but that's one of the requirements to even submit it, is that the board passes a resolution giving the permission to apply directly to them. Okay. Perfect. I think that's good. I, I, I think we should still have some better plans put together for this, but to go after a grant, I think that's great. There's more funding, for sure. We, we can actually um, complete the amphitheater without extra money. So. Right. So good. Perfect. Well, that's great. Do Glad you, you guys are a draft. Good. Well, this is this is the draft, right? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Right. So we need to <laughs> approve the draft so you can sign it, so then you can right. Yes, we need to approve the we need to approve the resolution so that you can go after more grant funding. Right. What's the cost estimate? The building we're estimating up to 120 grand. And work, right? 
all the work associated with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 This one I'm looking at is a little different. Do we need to motion <coughs> to approve a resolution <coughs> for Kelly? So that's that to Aaron. Different things, right? The letter is for the. Yeah, that's the letter. So that's the resolution. That's the actual resolution. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the actual resolution. Oh, so part of part of the package is um, for the grant money that we have. When we for the supplier, we have to basically tell them that we're looking at a building supplier and why we've selected them as the specific building supplier. So we just need you to sign it saying that we've done our due diligence looking at different suppliers, getting different quotes from them, and we've landed on them because their timeline is great, because we're a public agency, they don't require that we put a percentage down, and it takes only 150 50 days, was it 150 days from the time we order it to the time it's delivered, and it's 100% complete. So mm -hmm. there's not really, we wouldn't need to hire a separate contractor to finish the building. So the, that's part of the grant process is I have to show that I've done the work and that you're approving that we use that specific supplier. If in the end we don't use them, I just have to learn. <laughs> okay. So this, it says the financial manager, is that James or is that you working as the financial manager? Yes. Okay. Do we need to approve this particular letter to the state? The resolution. Are we going to, so, is the, so which one? are we doing the resolution? Do we need to approve both of them separately? So you just need to sign the letter saying that you okay. acknowledge we are going to try to go with that particular building supplier. Okay. But I do need the resolution in order to forward okay. the Foundation. Okay, so I'll we'll do the motion for the resolution first. So, do I have a motion to approve resolution number 2022 006, um, declaring permission to apply for donations and funding and fundraising as required by Sonora Area Foundation? I still motion. Do I have a second? Okay. Any discussion? Public? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Resolution passes the word. Zero with one absent. Okay, now the letter regarding the state, I, do we need to make a motion on that one as well? Or is this just something for a signature on this? I and mean, then, it's just okay. a signature is necessary. Okay. Is all. It's a Do you have one without holes for this guy, for this letter? I'm not sure. If not, we can do it after cleaning. Okay. That takes care of item 8.1. Um, we'll move to item 8.2, which is the consideration of, or the update on pump track, project CEQA planning. So I submitted a grading permit, and with that, Brian Eaton um, is the head of that department said looked everything over and he was he commented on the size the small size of the scope of the project and said that his office would file a uh, notice of exemption for the CEQA state and we're just waiting for that to come back to us. Okay. Yeah I and, and he was aware of the wetlands that are around there. Okay. Yeah that's just to me from what my experience working with stuff is just it's I don't know how we can file for an exemption. I, I just don't I, I mean Basically, right, if we consulted with Fish and Game or actually put that out there, right, we would, they would say, okay, you have to put in all these things to make sure that water doesn't discharge into this wet storm water. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what really concerns me. I'm definitely for this project. I think it's great. I just very, you know, liability-wise, is it's on us, not the county, right, right. in the end. So um, maybe it's something where maybe, maybe me and you can talk to Brian together okay. and just get a little bit more thought on it I, I, I just I'm, I'm just not comfortable about it. I'm just and maybe I could totally be wrong and maybe there's a bunch of exemptions that I don't know about but I know if I had to do a project like mm -hmm. like I was saying with that one I was doing it's right adjacent to wetland I have a slew of mm -hmm. mitigation measures I have to do so with the county 
compiles an exemption for us, we get it. Well, that, doesn't that's where I'm a little still confused. I'm still a little confused because typically it's the agency. Like we, if the county's the lead agency, they would be doing that. But if we were the lead agency, we would be doing it, which typically we would be. I was told this repeatedly when I yeah. talked to Natalie originally, you know, months ago. She says that, um, she said the grading permit would trigger the process and they would determine whether we were, could be exempt or not. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I just, I just don't see it. I don't, I don't know how they can. So, who, so if the county says that we're exempt and we're going based on the county and it's not true, who's in trouble? Us or the county? The they could go after anybody. Yeah. They could go after the district. I mean, it's the person that's doing the work, right? They would right. come after, I think, uh, they could, I, I guess they technically could, would go after the county too. I mean, they're the ones, we're the one who told them what the, what the project is, right? So the county could basically say, oh, well, they didn't tell me what the project is good enough or well enough. They didn't define the scope of the work well enough and didn't tell us that there was going to be impacts to the wetlands. And the county's just giving us the actual grading permit. They don't provide the CEQA exemptions. So well, that's what James is saying is they do. They do? It this does do where, that? Yes, this is what I was told. Okay. You had a comment? Well, this, <clears throat> I know at the Sanitary District, we, we are a district, uh, special district, and the county has no authority over here. So, um, but we have to meet state and federal rules. And the grading permit through the county would be I mean, you to build something here on district property, you don't get a building permit through the county unless you want to. Yeah, you can to get PG service, we would. But yeah, um, you don't technically. If you have, you can write a letter that says you don't have to, but we don't have anybody qualified right. I mean, to yeah, that so inspection. So what I'm saying is, I don't <laughs> understand how the county would give you a grading permit when they can't even give you a building permit. I mean, they they can give you a building permit, you but it's not necessary. It's not necessary right. technically if we have staff that's qualified to inspect the work. Yeah, but I know at the sanitary district, of course, we had to meet state, federal. I mean, yeah. I mean. We have to have, it's, uh, we have to do an archaeological study. I mean, to dig trenches down the road. We have to have archaeological studies and environmental studies, and that's why it costs 800 and some thousand just to get the permits for the paperwork done. So, so I, I think the di district would be on the hook, not the county. And, and in the end, yeah. But again, I don't, it's a great project. I'm not against it, just I think you should cover yourself. That's just my main concern. I, right, I go down there. Right. But you know, I just want to make sure well, the, work, the district's protected. Follow up along those lines with him and see okay. uh, again what he has to say. Okay, perfect. Do they give you a state and federal permit then? I mean, if, I well, they would file the county would basically if they're filing the NOE, they would be the lead agency on the project, which happens. We I've done that before for other entities. So. Was there any actions we needed to take on this besides just more of an update on this? Okay, no. perfect. Any other comments, questions from the board or members of the public? Hearing none, we'll move on to item 8.3, um, consideration of Christmas events. <laughs> well, the Christmas parade is scheduled and planned for Friday, December 9th. Um, and so we are uh, contacting, we're uh, accepting applications for entries into the parade. We're coordinating vendors. We will have, uh, the tribe will provide a road sign, a special event sign. They will bring out some of their light uh, towers, light uh, standards for us on the corners. Uh, we're looking for some more volunteers. We'll naturally, so we're going to have our, our marketplace inside the hall. And hopefully, with good weather, we'll set Santa and Santa's Village up outside like we did last year. The parade, the vendors will be in the hall Friday at 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. And we hope to have some hot food and perhaps some carolers on that night. And then um, the vendors will come. The parade will be at 6 Friday night, and vendors will stay on through Saturday in the hall. Great. Santa. What kind of vendors have you had in the past? You know, people that are geared toward like gifty things for the holidays, like jewelry and hats and scarves and a lot of them. there's candy, chocolates. What else? Oh, we've got we've got woodworking. We've got the guy that makes stuff out of bullets and um, <laughs> bullet lights. Mm -hmm. um, and are there food vendors in there too? We're going to try to get some food vendors. We haven't had any in the past. We've had um, popcorn, caramel corn. Um, so we're going to try to get um, some of our food vendors from the concert series to come down and be here. Great. Kona Ice? <laughs> yeah. Ice. Well, we're going to just throw a taqueria. That would be great. Yeah. And maybe pizza. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have
have um, someone announce it. Marianne, hopefully, will come and announce the, the entries in the grave. Perfect. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh? What? No. Okay. Any other discussion? Comments? Hearing none. Cool. Sounds cool to me. Yeah. Is that the weekend that they usually have it, or is it usually out later in the year? I always thought it was. Yeah, we Second. we had that on Christmas time. We had that one weird year, Second right? Friday. What yeah. was that one weird year where we were doubling up, or was that during COVID or something? No, it's one. Didn't you used to have it like the Friday after <coughs> Sonora or something? No, it's always the second Friday. Second Friday. Twain Hart actually has theirs on the first Friday, mm -hmm. which is the week after. Sonora's is Friday after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. And okay. then Twain Hart is the following Friday, which is usually the first Friday in December, mm -hmm. and then ours is the second Friday. Okay. Yeah, and one it. year, I think for some reason, I think Cindy didn't put it on our calendar. I don't know what happened, but it ended up being the first Friday. It was there was like a mm. conflict. Mm -hmm. yeah. like 17, 18 or something. Yeah, or, something or, like that. or it skipped a week. It was either a week later or a week earlier mm -hmm. than what it normally was, and we got a little fouled up there. Yeah, but uh, we're back on track. Where it's the second uh, section right around Christmas. Mm -hmm. it's Thanksgiving. It's yeah. That's yeah. Sonora. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Item eight point four, employee six month evaluation. So Kelly has reached her six month anniversary on October 11th. And uh, she had a very positive evaluation. And I'm asking the board to approve a wage increase of a dollar an hour for her position. And <clears throat> a 50 cent increase was included and approved in our current budget at six months with an additional 50 cents to come in April of that budget, of this current budget. And, but I'm asking it to, for you just to have it go to a dollar uh, based on Kelly's performance and her workload. Isn't this supposed to be closed session to do that? I don't think it's kind of up to her, Kelly. Okay, yeah, it's usually that. Yeah, we can do it in closed session. You can do it either or. You can't. Yeah. Well, that, my, that, my question is, is, is it public position. knowledge as far as the position and what she gets paid? Yeah. Yes. That's what's public knowledge. That's what's public. Okay. So this is for the position of office manager, actually. Yeah, I think they can request the, the, yeah, the, the evaluation. Yeah, actually say it can be that in public. Now. Yeah. I'm just not seeing that. Yeah. Try to stay away from closed session meetings. Yeah. Or closed session if we can. Well, it's kind of actually it, part of it. The only part of it that can is done in closed session is the actual evaluation. Mm -hmm. You can't discuss the amount or any of that stuff. All, when you discuss the rate raises or increases or any dollar amounts, those are actually need to be discussed in a public forum. Yeah. So we're just doing it all in public. Perfect. Perfect. Good question, though. Thank you. Um, so you're asking for a dollar raise now. We were in April of next year. We were going to the board approved for a 50 percent raise. No, um, I'll, yes, that would have been an additional 50 cents. Okay. So we were um, at six months. We had approved a 50 cent increase, mm -hmm. and six months was October 11th. Mm -hmm. And then in April, which is um, a year gone by, would be um, there was another 50 cents. So that was all within. The budget, mm -hmm. but April had only April, May, and June, mm -hmm. so it was only three months mm -hmm. that it would have had it will have been a dollar in total. Okay, so it's an extra 50 cents for six months, okay. is what I'm asking for, and it does incur about 350 dollars over what we approved. And what's the dollar per hour amount that it would be come from 19 to 20? Um. I would like to make a motion to approve the one dollar increase for the office manager. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Second. Go ahead. Second. Go ahead. Kenny. Uh, further discussion? Yeah, I think that's. I'm fine with that. It's just as long as we aren't. I mean, we have plenty in reserves. I don't think we're. I think we're still under budget projections for the year anyway. So I think that's good. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly, for your. Yes. Yeah. For working hard, you deserve it. So thank you. Yeah. I had actually. We had thought that I was going to work like 30 hours a week. So really, it, it is covered because it's budgeted. I work 30 hours a week, and most of the time I don't. So yeah, that's actually not some that savings from that. Mm -hmm. cool. Any other discussion from the board? Public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Passes 4 0. And that wraps up our discussion action items for the night. Uh, items to discuss for next meeting. Um, I had the county agreement on here for maintenance. The whole, the resiliency center is open now. We're going to be, so you know, I think those negotiations need to start of how we're going to be. We, um, Submitted a proposal to them. 
Okay. So maybe that's just something, you know, because we're coming in, if I'm not mistaken, we're coming into our fourth year. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk, talk, talk about that. Are we talking about a contract for the Resilience Center or our current contract? Current contract. Okay. It is, um, we're in our fourth year currently. It's um, typically negotiated in April okay. to be finalized in June. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, um, it's a, we will have a new board sitting next month. So I think it may be beneficial okay. for to that is review it, mm -hmm. review it, <laughs> kind of give them a history on how the the contracts have been, you know, issued and stated, and mm -hmm. um, what we what the what this current board has been pushing for with the resiliency center getting that maintenance contract and. Mm -hmm. And I would assume we would lump that into one contract. That we discussed. Or do we say two? Those. I think we. I think yeah. There were I think we were kind cons. of yeah, we pros were, and cons. It hasn't been a real. You know, we haven't really talked about it yeah. at length. But we were. Yeah. You know, we the last time we talked about it, we talked about keeping it separate. Yeah. So we can we can have that discussion. I'm sure the county will want to weigh into that. You know, more paperwork on their end and more you know two checks. So we'll, we can get their input too on it as well. And how long ago was that sent that proposal? Mm -hmm. Last month. Last month. Um, pump track again, um, and then um, anything else? I think it, yeah. I have two things. Um, assigned board positions. Oh, correct. Great job. Mm -hmm. And my second thing is I'd like to put on the agenda consideration to withdraw from the agreement with TSD to consolidate. You want to do that at a meeting before we do a, a, a informational on the CSD? Could be towards the end of the meeting. Okay, so we can, if you want to do that, we can put that on the agenda. I don't have an issue with it. I mean, you know, really, it's the, really, it's the, the board's prerogative of how they want to do it. But I would, you know, warn any new board members that without knowing anything about the CSD, I wouldn't go withdraw from an application like that. And, and there, you know, we did sign an agreement, so we should look at that and see what the repercussions would be if we withdraw from it. Um, so I definitely like. And there's no rush to withdraw from it, is there? I mean, is there a timeline that we're working <coughs> with? No. I mean, I'm asking Eric, do you have time. a timeline? I'm asking for it to be put on the agenda. Okay. Uh, okay. I think we should have a, a, a good informative discussion about the CSD then, for sure. Comments? Yeah, I think that's bullshit. Um, the new board members haven't even been, one of them hasn't even been to a board meeting ever. I have no idea what's going on. Aaron's spreading a bunch of rumors around the community about the CSD that are incorrect. And um, I find it very offensive. He's trying to bring it up. I think that it's a long process. He knows there's not even close to being uh, finalized. It's, it's still under, um, the county hasn't even got back to us about the lighting district. Um, I, I think uh, I wanted to bring up that Aaron went to the uh, cemetery district and cost uh, the community $500 plus staff for a special meeting that was held uh, about the uh, LAFCO that I think was uh, beyond his, I mean, maybe as a personal person you can, but the fact that they called a special meeting and spent $500 without, when they, it, no urgency, it's, it couldn't even happen, nothing's even happening. They had a board meeting. The only reason I found out about this, I happened to be at the board meeting, they didn't read, they approved this minutes and the last minutes, but they didn't read this one out loud when I was there. I think it blew their mind that I was there because they were trying to, I mean, I don't, think so they I don't understand. The cemetery district was going to make some kind of a vote or a resolution? <coughs> no. That? Aaron warned them that LAFCO may recommend, which they have in the past, LAFCO. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody even knows what LAFCO is. LAFCO is an independent uh, uh, committee. It's a local agency uh, formation commission. It's to look at uh, districts in the community. And in the past, they've recommended that the park and rec and the cemetery and the fire and everybody in Tuolumne for efficiency and stuff, as did the grand jury to consolidate. There's been a tremendous amount of problems in the, in the local area here. But for an individual to go and get the community, the um, cemetery to have a special board meeting costing the community $500 plus staff, because they get $100 stipend per person. Uh, when the regular meeting was like a week and a half away, to send a letter to, according to the minutes, they sent it to LAFCO. Well, they sent it to the board of supervisors. I have a copy of the letter they sent. And it wasn't to LAFCO. Um, just, just a very unprofessional, very underhanded, and run by one person. And he also went beyond the. Um, was it on the behalf of in person, or was it on the I behalf of the I'm board? I'm sure this. I assume it would be on his behalf because it would be very unlike. Uh, since the board voted 
which he did do also. The board voted to continue the resolution. And he went and called the supervisors and the county employees and told them to stop processing it. And that's so out of line. When a board votes something in and one board member doesn't like it and they go behind the board's back, I have a real problem with that even being on the agenda next week till some things get taken care of. So can you explain that was sent by the cemetery district to the board of supervisors? They sent a letter, as they did before, to the, the minutes say they sent it to LAFCO, which mm -hmm. wasn't, the letter was addressed to the board of supervisors. So the, the minutes aren't correct. There's a lot of things that aren't right. right. And the letter says what? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a call to order just because we're kind of off topic here, guys. So we're, we're we can talk about, about this. We're talking about items for next board meeting. We right. we have. Okay. That's that's what this is about. I mean, he's yeah. trying to get something on the agenda that I don't believe. I think okay. that there's no urgency. The community he may have his supporters. I can pack this room with a hundred people who would agree opposite <coughs> him, and he's going to special districts. He's talking to to uh, county employees and saying that as a board member of Park and Rec and going against what the board does. That's, that's not kosher. What you're doing is wrong. And you're really opening yourself up to get in, in trouble. And I want to warn you on that. And the fact that it, it's just very frustrating because you're, you're creating a, a problem when there's no problem. It needs to run its course. The public will have all the time they want. But the board voted for something. You can't change it yourself because you don't like it. That's wrong. And you have a comment? No, I have a comment. Okay. Um, I so have another item I would like to see on the board. Okay. Okay. The River Ranch Campground um, owners asked me to express the fact that they're considering selling um, the campground uh, portion um, and they were wondering if the Park and Rec would like to look into that as far as a possible purchase, which would include your 60 some year lease that's left or whatever. Anybody know how many years are left on that lease? I don't remember. <laughs> but um, it's, it's pretty, it's like 28 acres of <coughs> property. Uh, and if you, they, they like to give you guys first choice. If you don't, they are definitely going to, they're also soliciting to other people, but it would be an option um, for 28 acres. Their big concern, what it always been, is that someone runs the project or property and keeps, um, keeps uh, limits people from going onto their property. They own upstream from the campground. And, uh, that would be kind of one of the main conditions. Is that there's, there's two homes. There's a district has a house and the barn. And then there's a pole house that's a little two bedroom, one bath house. There's a bathroom facility which is on the district property, and so um, that they built and maintained and stuff. So it's it's just a potential thing that I'd like to see put on the agenda. So they're trying to sell the 28 acres. There's 28 acres, 40 acres of park and rec uh, leased property that they have the lease on, and there's I think about 20 acres that's in a, that runs on a four to five year lease from the U.S. Forest Service, which is the Hacienda Campground, which would be all included in the sale. Yeah, it might be good. I mean, 28 acres of on the river property, and I think their asking price roughly is about three, I mean, don't quote me, but around 380000 which is <laughs> very expensive for riverfront property. <laughs> so just, a, just something I'd like to get on the agenda. James, can you make sure we have the lease on hand and how many years we have left on that? And um, I, I can work with you to get a map together on that with the different parcels mm -hmm. uh, for, for the item. They're, they're in the process of doing that boundary line adjustment. They're going to eliminate, they have eight parcels, they're going to eliminate one, create a 28 acre parcel. It's basically everything on the um, park and rec side of the road up to the old bridge, not, you know, up to the old bridge, and then they're going to maintain two or three sites from the old bridge up that they would lease back to the, to the um, purchaser, but they wanted to control those in case there's a problem that would be a, 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 spot, a buffer. Between. The Forest Service lease port part of that too? Yes. If, uh, oh, I mean, you'd have to renew that with the Forest Service, which is... So are you just talking about that little, like, hook section that's above the old bridge and before right. the road? before the new bridge, yeah. Okay. It's a, but, but there is three or four sites in there that are, are nice sites, and they would lease those back, but they just... But there's nothing that they don't want. I mean, we, for years we've eliminated people beyond the, um, the, the gates bridge. that are on the yeah, curve, right? on the curb, because that just directly gives them access to their property, and that's where there's a lot of problems with them. Over What's in our family? <laughs> I, have, I have a question. So I'm not sure this needs to be an agenda item, but if, if the if the information is true that uh, a board member contacted the board of supervisors and or county employees, doesn't that warrant that we should talk to county council and find out what the ramifications of that might be, either for the board and or for the board member? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, basically. I mean, that's, that's if the board voted and somebody tries to undo what the board did as an individual of the board and with, with the quote unquote the authority of being a board member, um, I have a problem with that. And that shouldn't stand. Yeah, I mean, and whether it's a matter of censorship or something uh, beyond that, uh, I'm sure that there's legal ramifications that county council would advise us about. Okay. So that, that might be something that is not on the open agenda, but maybe a closed session. I don't know, but county council would, I'm sure, have an opinion on that. And if there's documentation, I don't know if there's any documentation, but if there's any form of documentation of that correspondence or phone calls, um, I think we should know about it. And also that um, to clarify things going forward, if we have a new board and it becomes contentious in any way, then we know what our boundaries are. Okay. Great. I'll look into that. Okay. Any other items for next meeting? Hearing none. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Second. Discussion? Public comment? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say your name. Or zero. Meetings adjourned, please. Can we back Yeah. I just have to go to try to make more meetings in the community. Yeah. Yes, Well, always have time to plug someone in. We'll go ahead and do it a few days ahead one. But it is a good idea to see the deadline. Okay, I know what you're saying. Okay, okay.